Hey there guys, this is Phone Tech Kid and today we're going to be taking a look at the CM10.1 Nightly's ROM for your Galaxy S4. So guys, let's get started. So as I said guys, all the Galaxy S4s are supported. That includes Sprint, T-Mobile, et and the Canadian versions and the i9505 and the i9500 so as I said all of them I'll have all the links down below and they'll also have the links for the gaps there too so make sure to install the ROM and the gaps so uh, as I said in the beginning of the video these are nightlies meaning that this ROM is updated basically nightly so every night there should be a new update and you just go to the XDA thread and check if there's a new update for your device. So uh, uh, before a lot of people had problems with nightlies, uh, they weren't stable enough, you'd have problems, but right now they have become a lot more stable, and especially for the S4 right now, the nightlies are just outstanding. I mean, they're just blazing fast and there's no problems at all. Um, we could open up camera here, everything is working perfectly fine. We could change a bunch of settings here, Everything is normal on camera, and you could go all the way up to 12.8 megapixels. So, what Signage Mod is really well known for is how they're able to really give you a stock Android feel, and they also throw in some features to give you a better experience. So, a lot of other ROMs and 4.2.2 ROMs actually use CM10.1 Source, just since it's so stable and they're really good at what they do. So if we pop up into settings, we can go into launcher. Basically this is the trebuchet launcher that comes pre-installed on your Galaxy S4 once you flash the ROM. So you get a bunch of customization here just like you would in Nova Launcher. You could change the home screens, the drawer, the dock, and just general stuff. So all that is customizable. Uh, when we go into lock screen, you basically get your normal what you'd see in lock screen you could change the clock widget on there which is C lock so you get a bunch of settings here that you could also go through and then you could also choose which slider shortcuts you want these are the ones that come preset and of course you could add any other ones you want and that's about it in lock screen if we go down we do get themes so basically you can install themes from the play store and uh, update them here so then you could theme your stock UI if it's a little bit boring for you and last but not least where you get most of your features is system so if we enter system we could go to status bar uh, we could change the battery status style right now I have a circle with the percentage in it so you can just click here you could choose between circle percentage icon or circle with percentage or you can just get rid of the battery the whole thing so Next we do get AM PM style, so I'm sure you guys all know we could choose small and it adds a little AM down below since it's 829 AM. So another cool setting that we do get here is brightness control. Now I've showed this a couple of times, basically when you hold the status bar, you can increase or decrease the brightness by sliding your finger on the top. You just leave it like that for now, but that's really cool feature or at least for me it is we do get quick settings control so we could go in through here and customize our quick settings you can see they're really customizable and I've customized mine up there too and it works perfectly fine and the other stuff I'm pretty sure you're already known with in quick setting panel then we do get notification drawer settings I'm sure you're all familiar with power widget Basically, when you swipe down, it gives you the 4.1.2 toggles instead of the 4.2.2 if you want the old stuff. Uh, you could also go through here and add more buttons and change the order of them. So if we exit out of that, we can enable expand desktop. Basically, all that does is it allows you, when you hold the power button, to expand the desktop and remove the status bar to kind of give you more screen real estate we could disable that there 
if we go to power menu we have all these options to enable we can enable screenshot expand desktop airplane mode sound panel and reboot menu and of course we get a customized clock widget there also the notification light and battery light you could go through them and change the colors of when you get a missed call or voicemail or anything you want to do with the battery also then we do get hardware key settings so you could um, change the settings for your home key menu key and menu key long press so you can make them have do a different action instead of for example um, opening up recent apps so once you've installed the ROM you want to go to about phone down here and keep tapping on the build number until it says you're a developer once you've done that you're gonna get two extra settings or actually three that's gonna be super user performance and developer options In developer options it's the normal stuff you're used to you could go through here enable USB debugging if you want and some other stuff here too and then the new thing is performance so we could go through here and we could go to processor and for now you can't really overclock as you can see 1890 is the highest you could go so can not overclock you can underclock though actually so you could go through here and if you want better battery life you can move it down to 1782 or 1674 since the Galaxy S4 is already such a powerful device here we can also change the governor if you wish to so last but not least let's do a quick quadrant standard test just to see how fast this ROM performs spec wise so we're gonna click run full benchmark so there it goes you can see it's blazing through it hopefully we get a good score I think the average right now for the S4 is around 12,000 which is already a really high number so we'll see how it performs right now so guys as I said uh, there are no known issues right now if you look through the XDA thread and you go to the main post it says there that there are no issues so if you guys don't believe me you could check there and of course you could read the comments in the XDA thread to see what problems if there are any people are having but in my case I haven't had any problems okay so the benchmark finish we'll click yes and there you go we got 7283 so you can see right there maybe not the best score but again quadrant standard doesn't affect everything and that doesn't always tell the truth and CM 10.1 is still one of the fastest ROMs you could flash on your S4 so uh, that's about it guys I hope you enjoyed this video please make sure to subscribe for more videos like this also, do make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the ROM, leave the comments down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, guys, so uh, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.